Hello, I'm Chuck Martin, and welcome to The Future is Coming, Just Not When You Think. With me today is James Heller, CEO and co-founder of Rapify, a performance-driven, out-of-home ad tech platform that helps brands expand their messaging through the use of wrapped vehicles. James has been marketing director at Scale Matrix and senior manager at digital marketing Ingram MicroCloud. At Rapify, James leads the vision behind the San Diego company's product, cultivates the sales team, and leverages his marketing background to support the brand's identity. Rapify has more than 200,000 drivers nationwide and counts brands like Anheuser-Busch, Petco, and eBay as clients. Welcome here, James. Hey, Chuck. I, thanks for having me. Oh, my pleasure. I'm looking forward to this. So tell, tell me about, about what your business is. A lot of people don't even know what, what, what wrapping vehicles means. Yeah, sure. Well, you know, it does... It, what we do is goes far beyond wrapping vehicles, but at, at a very high level, we pay people to advertise on their vehicle through various forms. Wrapping vehicles is part of it. And, you know, these people are folks that drive for the various ride sharing companies, food delivery, grocery delivery, or folks that just want to monetize their commute. Uh, and on the brand side, we provide brands the ability to actually what that exposure actually does in terms of driving a business outcome like a conversion on a website or foot traffic into a retail environment. So how, how does it work? How do you, how, where do you get a driver? Yeah, so the way it works is, and today we have about 280,000 drivers uh, that have downloaded the Rapify app. So we have a driver app, very similar to like how a Uber driver would have a Uber driver app or a Lyft driver would have a Lyft driver app. We have a Rapify driver app. So if you wanna make money by driving with Rapify, you gotta download the Rapify app. We use that app to log your background location data and that data is used to match you with the campaign based on where you typically drive if there's a campaign available or when a campaign becomes available. And once once the campaign becomes available, you, uh, you, you get notified via the Rapify app. If it's a brand that you want on your vehicle, uh, you opt into it. Then we you know push you through a background check, link you up with one of our network installers. We get your vehicle wrapped and you start earning on a per mile basis uh, once that campaign starts. So it's a, it's a really cool process. We've served some of the largest brands on the planet and, uh, brands love it because it's taking something that was really hard to measure, you know, out of home advertising, which is kind of the category we fit in and making it more measurable and more attributable. So what, who's a, who's a typical driver? Is it like, like an Uber or Lyft driver or something else? Yeah, about 40% of our driver base are drivers that drive for other gig economy platforms. So that could be an Uber, a Lyft driver, uh, it could be a DoorDash, Grubhub, Instacart driver, because um, we're effectively a bolt-on to doing those those types of activities. Uh, in addition to just folks that want to monetize their commute. So if you, you, you're sitting in your car on a 20 to 30 minute plus commute every day, which is the vast majority of Americans, um, we provide you with the means to making that sitting in traffic a little more enjoyable. So this works for an, ag an actual, uh, just a plain old consumer? Correct. And then what do you do for the advertiser? How do they how do they find you or how do you find them? Yeah, I mean we have a we have an ad sales team and we've built up a, a you know built a brand that now brand, brands that want to be able to scale advertising on vehicles nationwide while also being able to measure what that exposure actually does for the brand. That's that's why brands leverage us. So wrapping we don't sell the allure of wrapping vehicles. That's simply how we deliver home exposure, the reach and the frequency. Our platform and the thing that's really cool about our platform is our ability to actually measure what the exposed audience does uh, after their exposure. How do, how do you actually measure it? So all the drivers are running the Rapify app and we're using the location data to be able to correlate live traffic, historical traffic volume, and uh, the, mobile, uh, the mobile devices that are within an exposure radius for the purposes of measuring. Uh, we patented a method for measuring moving out of home object in 2016. That really put us on the map. Uh, 2017, I was a, a Forbes 30 under 30 as a result of that. You know, we've continued to scale. We made it to the Inc. 500 last year, and we serve the largest brand on the planet. So today, you know, we work with huge brands, and that kind of perpetuates itself. So typically for a brand, how many cars would, would they be, be on? Do you have a number? It really depends on the size of the market. We actually built a reach and frequency tool that our sales team uses to identify quantity vehicles in market. Um, but you know, typically 
it's between you know on the small you know 25 vehicles in a single market to 200 plus and do you do actual nationwide campaigns or is it typically by market uh, we we serve national advertisers, national brands. Uh, we do it. We 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 have a national campaigns. Uh, we typically are working hyper local, uh, regional. So we, while we can do something very localized, we also can serve national brands on a national scale. So is there any way you can send drivers like like a whole a whole pile of drivers, like a fleet of cars, to one location if you want to do a big blitz? We can. We have a feature called Swarm that brands use to actually do just that. So they uh, they buy credit, they buy Swarm credit, and you have you have to have a campaign on the road to be able to leverage Swarm, and our flooded medium, so our minimum campaign duration, four weeks. Typical campaigns are between four and 12 weeks long, which is kind of the average for most out-of-home campaigns. And yeah, we could get those vehicles, you know, like today, what's really timely is folks are, you know, folks are in, know in in lockdown and quarantine and having to stay in their neighborhoods so we could actually target specific neighborhoods based on demographics and use swarm to get those vehicles driving through there and because a lot of the drivers that are on campaigns today are segmented to delivery um, so folks that are already driving for you know the DoorDashes, grubhub instacarts uber eats those types of platforms are already in those neighborhoods anyways so it gives us a, a really big advantage in terms of being able to drive a timely uh, location-based message. What what made you think of this? I wanted to use wanted to use it as a marketer, and this is kind of in fact my my five-year anniversary since I went full time at Rapify is actually today. So it's it's pretty cool. Where you know it's, this is actually the longest employment single you know longest job I've ever had uh, in terms of years. Yeah, it's been, it's it's amazing actually. It's amazing how fast five years go. But yeah, I wanted to. Uh, I was I was fascinated by the onset of the gig economy and things like Uber and Lyft and and uh, you know Airbnb and all these all these new platforms that allow you to monetize your primary asset and also allow people to make extra income and. I also thought it was equally fascinating how difficult it was to measure out of home advertising back in in you know the into 2015 and we're doing our part in trying to push that message forward and out of home more measurable. So can you are you measuring basically where the the vehicle is where the where the messaging is in terms of what the market is or or is there some way you can actually more accurately predict how many people have seen it? Yeah, so we, we patented a method for measuring impressions, which is how many people have seen it. Um, and we actually have a, a, a dashboard where you could log in as a brand and, and see how many impressions your campaign's delivering. We did that in 2016. We took it a step further in 2018 and built an attribution suite that allows us to actually see, okay, well, of the folks exposed in markets, uh, what did it do in terms of driving more conversion on my website. You know, if it's an e-commerce brand, how many people actually bought something online? Or a BB brand, how many of them signed up for a free account or uh, a demo? And then for retailers, our ability to actually drive footfall into a physical retail environment. And those are those are all the, those are the three primary use cases. Uh, in addition to like app-enabled brands, I want to be able to drive you know app installs and, and app engagement and usage. So. Not just quantifying eyeballs, but also measuring what those eyeballs are and the people that are attached to them uh, do after being exposed. So, do you end up having to turn away drivers who want to do this? Yeah, we have a much, much higher, uh, we have much higher supply than demand, and that's kind of obvious for for a number of reasons. One, it's easier to give people free money than it is to sell a new type of advertising to a fortune 500 brand. So, you know, we have a, we have an abundance of supply, but at the same time, you know, our, our demand has increased year over year because a, we're becoming more of a thing, you know, we're no longer a, uh, let's experiment with this. Now it's, now we have brands that have worked with us for three plus years that are continuing to leverage us. It would seem from, from, uh, at least from my viewpoint, this seems like a no brainer for a brand. It's it's a no-brainer once they understand what we do. You know, I think part of one of the challenges we have is because 
brand because our message to drivers is get paid to advertise on your vehicle that translates to brands as rapify is a company that wraps cars and you know if that's all the brand thinks uh, if that's all the thing that we do then we have a big disconnect because that's our value prop you know wrapping vehicles is just part of how we deliver uh, the beginning of our value prop but the real value proposition is measure, being able to scale nationally put it where you want to put it and measure it so actually you could go to an advertiser and say hey or to a retailer as an example and say hey let us let us see if we can increase your footfall and don't even tell them that you're wrapping cars and they just see their footfall increase right and when we talk to brands you know it's very we we very seldom talk about wrapping cars it's just generally understood that's how we're delivering the out of home component we also are able to use those vehicles to trigger multi-channel digital retargeting which is another big value prop. So example, you know, Coca-Cola branded vehicle passes Chuck while he's sitting in traffic and you see a Coca-Cola message uh, on your mobile device and, you know, on display when you get into the office and hear a Coca-Cola ad on, on uh, you know, your audio streaming service and then seeing it on connected TV, like that entire experience we create for brands. And that's that's why they really like Rapify. That's why they continue to leverage it. So your company was really rolling. I've been tracking it for a while, really rolling when the pandemic hit. What, how did you adapt to the pandemic? Yeah, so you know, before the pandemic, almost all of our outbound marketing messaging to brands was advertised on Rideshare nationwide. And because Rideshare, and while Rideshare is only a segment of our driver base, that was always very attractive because of the Ubiquity of uh, ubiquity of wrap or of of rideshare vehicles nationally. Well, rideshare today is down, you know, eighty plus percent in terms of usage. So that value prop kind of just disappeared, um, at least for the acute time period. But on the on the other end of things, delivery, mo you know, food delivery, grocery delivery, those uh, gig services have seen a massive uh, uptick in usage. And a lot of the, many of these folks are the same drivers that were doing rideshare. They're doing both. And now they've just transitioned to doing delivery. So today, our value prop is being the largest nationally scaled ad platform for being able to use or leverage delivery drivers to get your message in neighborhoods. So we're more focused on hyper-local than national. We're more focused on delivery than rideshare. So what happens going forward, do you think? I mean, you must have to plan for this. Yeah, well, I think this is going to change delivery forever. Um, there are people that never, ever used DoorDash or Grubhub or Instacart before the pandemic, but we're kind of forced to. So I think the volume of people, the amount of time that has gone by, because uh, it wasn't like, hey, you have to use delivery over the weekend because you can't buy anything for two days. It's it's now been like months, you know, it's not, and it will be, it'll be months going into the future. So I think the acceptance and understanding that you're going to have somebody dropping your groceries or your, your, your dinner off at your front doorstep and the idea of a stranger bringing you your, you know, your, essential, your essentials, that is, uh, that's going to change the way we do commerce in the U.S. So I don't see delivery you know, disappearing after social distancing measures go away. So is your business basically, uh, it's really just based on things moving. It's essentially a, a sophisticated thousands and hundreds of thousands of moving billboards that in real time. Yeah, we try not to use the word moving billboard because that's a, that's like a, its own category. But yeah, so to speak, it's an, it's an out of home placement on a vehicle and it's our ability to orchestrate that and measure it. So in the future, if, if something different happens, do you basically just switch transportation modes? Like you, like you basically switch transportation modes on a dime here and said, okay, it's not ride share, now it's delivery. Now, I mean, vehicles are going to keep moving no matter what. Right. And, that's, and our goal at Rapify is to be the largest ad platform for things that move. You know, my, that's, that, that's, my, that's my ultimate goal in terms of like what is Rapify's what is Rapify's mission? And that, that's our mission is to be the largest, the, the largest ad platform for things that move. And whether that's a rideshare vehicle, a bus, a truck, uh, a number and anything that moves in the out of home space, like we want we want to be the de facto platform for do for for 
be able to buy it and measure it. So do you, do you wrap things like, like buses and trucks as well as cars? Not today. But is that just, is that just something you, you could do? It's just a twist? Yes, that's, that's correct. Anything that moves. Our, our technology doesn't care if it's on a, 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 a pass vehicle or a, a box truck or a city bus. So after the, moving, we can measure. after the world gets back to any kind of normalcy, presuming it gets back to some kind of normalcy, what, what do you see your business evolving to? Do you think you stay with delivery? Uh, well, again, like we haven't stopped talking about ride share. It's just the focus has been more on delivery. No, I think I think we're going to continue to adapt, and whether it's a uh, whether it's delivery, whether it's transit, whether it's ride share, whether it's a you know con a commuter vehicle, it, it, it all really all depends on the environment. And that's one of the things we have the luxury of being able to do and adapt to, is being able to adapt the uh, the focus. So is that because of your underlying system, basically? I mean, because the wrapping vehicles is pretty straightforward. You just get a vehicle wrapped, uh, but but it must it's all this other stuff you mentioned that's kind of the core. Yeah, the other stuff that is actually the 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 other stuff is actually the most important stuff. The wrapping of the vehicle is really, you know, that that is just part of the the operational process. The the platform for orchestrating, measuring, automating a lot of the the operational tasks that go into all three parties that have to take this thing on the road and do it at scale. That's what makes Rapify really special. And so our, whether it's a, a, a passenger, a personal passenger vehicle that's doing, uh, that, that's just a commuter vehicle or it's doing food delivery or ride share or, you know, a commercial vehicle that's doing delivery doesn't really matter. Platform doesn't matter. All we need to do, all, all all, all we need to do is ingest location data for our platform to, to operate. So for you, the pandemic wasn't really, a, or the, the, the new model wasn't really an issue. The model wasn't an issue. The biggest issue has been just ad industry in general has come, basically went to, came to a screeching halt. It's not just, yeah, it wasn't, I mean, ad spend virtually froze. And we're starting to see it open back up. You know, June, we're already starting to see brands starting to plan for, for June and going into Q3. Yeah, I mean, we had a, you know, Q2 was not a, was, is, is going to be a very, very light quarter for not just Rapify, but for several other ad platforms. Yeah, I think, I think everybody is taking a hit on Q2. So what do you, where do you see this going forward for, for you? Just, just keep rolling on transportation? Uh, yeah, anything that moves. So Today, the focus is delivery. Um, will that change? Will that shift? Focus? I mean, only time will tell. I can't, I, I can't really, I, I don't think rideshare is going to make a, a really quick comeback. I think it's going to be several months before rideshare usage starts to get back to where it was. I, I, I think people will be, I mean, people are getting back on the road. In Southern California, if you hop on the freeway, you know, it's during the day, it doesn't feel like there's a pandemic. Um, there's still plenty of traffic on the freeway. It's not as, it's definitely not at the, the levels it was during rush hour. We don't really have a rush hour anymore, but yeah, I mean, again, like I think we're, we're going to see more of a focus on delivery. We're going to see more of a focus on hyper local because brands are starting to realize that that's people are staying closer to their homes today. You know, when they go outside, they're really going outside for, you know, walk around the neighborhood or staying within that, you know, immediate one mile radius of their, their home. So you're a, a leader of a business, so you had to figure out what to do. What, how do you see other businesses dealing with this? Yours seems like it was kind of, kind of easier because you already had transportation as your core in terms of simply moving to a different set of vehicles. How do you see other industries, if you're giving that any thought? Yeah, I mean, I think some industries are, are going to have a really big challenge. You know, retail is... I mean, if you're a retailer, a national retailer, or even a local mom and pop retailer, uh, there's you have to completely change the way you do business, and in in many cases, you, you're going to go out. You you have to go out of business. That's I mean that's a, a stark reality. Um, in terms of in terms of what I'm seeing work, we're seeing re I'm, I'm seeing retailers do. A lot. It's not just okay. Well, now you got to sell your stuff online. 
much of what retail, what much of the retail experience is touching and feeling and seeing what, you know, those clothes look like when you put them on or, or, you know, what those shoes feel like when you, when you try to try them on and walk around in the store, you know, and that, that kind of stuff, there's a bunch of new technology and a bunch of new AR technology that I think is being, being latched onto. So what do you um, see some of the future technologies of being of high value? I really like what, uh, like, for example, there's another company who's also, a f you know, the founder is also a fellow under 30 called Vertebrae. And, you know, they do some really interesting stuff for e-commerce for making it so that you can see what that couch will look like in your living room or what that those pair of glasses will look like on your face. So I think that is going to get more refined. You know, it's it's in its infancy today. We're going to start to see more of that. Um, I think we're going to see more virtual experience in, in events centered around retail. So being able to, I, like, I wouldn't be surprised if we were to see like a, a, a virtual event from a very large, you know, fashion brand that allowed you to participate with new product, a new product release and, and be part of that release versus just watching a video online. So I, and I, and I also think the uh, the way that we buy product is just is just going to change entirely. Like, what, subscription has obviously been a thing for a while now. I think we're going to start to see less less disposable and more, you know, more uh, more more products that are designed to be uh, a longer lasting product. So, where do you see your business two years from now? Two years from now, I see us being more, be, leveraging more, uh, more inventory uh, in in different in different environments that don't currently exist on Rapify's platform today. So, like for example, you know, the last mile delivery and interstate trucking and transit, I think, will all be things that, in some way, shape, or form, are going to be tied back to Rapify's platform. Well, I'll be interested in watching. Uh, thank you very much, James. And thank you all for listening to The Future is Coming, just not when you think. Thanks, Chuck.